subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon, to never miss a video from us. Hi, welcome to these practice questions on AMLKYC. These questions, are based on AMLKYC certification by vSkills. For a simulated exam, visit, www.vskills.in. Question number 1, which of the following scenarios, will most likely require, the filing of a suspicious activity report, SAR, with the national FIU? 1. A nightclub located near a community college, makes 450,000 rupees, cash deposits every day. The deposited items are solely, 2,500 rupees, and 5,000 rupee bills. 2. A check casher makes 450,000 rupees, cash deposits every day. The deposited items are primarily 500 rupees, and 1000 rupee bills. 3. A grocery store makes multiple ATM deposits, each day at around the same time. The deposits are a combination of checks, and cash, mostly smaller bills. In total, there are usually 400 to 500 items, deposited each day. 4. A busy around-the-clock gas station, or convenience store, located at a major intersection, makes three deposits each calendar day utilizing tellers, night drops, and ATMs. The total cash deposited on weekdays, often comes near the currency reporting threshold. Monday deposits, require the bank, to file currency transaction reports, due to the aggregation of the weekend deposits, however this is done in the back office, without the customer's knowledge. The options are A. Both 1 and 2 above B. 1 2 and 3 above. C. Both 3 and 4 above. D. 1, 3 and 4 above. The correct answer is, option A. Question number 2, which of the following acts, defines the offense of money laundering, as under engaging directly, or indirectly in a transaction that involves property, that is proceeds of crime, or derived from proceeds of crime, or knowingly receiving, possessing, concealing, disguising, transpiring, converting, disposing off, within the territories of India, removing form, or bringing into the territory of India the property, that is proceeds of crime. The options are A. Anti-Money Laundering Act, 2005 B. Active Money Laundering Act, AMLA, 2003 C. Prevention of Money Laundering Act PMLA, 2002 D. Impediment of Money Laundering Act, PMLA, 2002 The correct answer is, option C. Question number 3, what is money derived from criminal activity, known as? The options are, A. Proceeds possession B. Proceeds of crime C. Dirty money D. Crime laundering The correct answer is, option B. Question number 4, money laundering is the result of crime, and the persons behind the crimes, appear to be using banking channels for the purpose of dash. 1. Fund transmission. 2. Creating a legal front of money, raised through illegal, and humanity demeaning methods. Fill in the blank. The options are A. Only one above B. Only two above C. Both one and two above D. None of these The correct answer is, option C. Question number 5, which of the following, are the consequences of money laundering? 1. Can cause predictable changes in money demand 2 can pose risk to soundness of financial institutions, and financial systems. 3. Contaminates the legal financial transactions. 4. Increases the volatility of, international capital flows, and exchange rates, due to unanticipated cross-border transfers. The options are, A, 1, 2 and 3 above, B, 1, 2 and 4 above, C, 2, 3 and 4 above, D, 1, 2, 3 and 4 above. The correct answer is, option D. 
Question number 6, money laundering involves three independent steps, that often occurs simultaneously. Which of the following best explains the layering, in the process of money laundering? The options are A. Physically placing bulk cash proceeds B. Separating the proceeds of criminal activity, from their origin, through complex level of financial transactions C. Providing a legitimate explanation for the illicit proceeds D. None of these The correct answer is, option B. Question number 7, which of the following are methods of layering? The options are, A. Transferring money through various financial institutions, among different names, in different financial institutions. B. Change over to different currencies, through complex deals in stocks, commodities, futures, etc. C. Deposits, and withdrawals are made continuously in their accounts, to vary the amount of balance in the accounts. D. All of these. The correct answer is, option D. Question number 8, Dash are fake companies, that appear on paper, but may not physically exist. Fill in the blank. The options are, A. Shell companies. B. Front companies. C. Offshore banking. D. Poala systems. The correct answer is, option A. Question number 9, which of the following are the usages of shell companies? The options are A. To create the appearance of legitimate transaction, through false invoice, and financial statements. B. To take loans against securities, acquired from dirty money, and paying taxes on profit. C. Both to create the appearance of legitimate transaction, through false invoice, and financial statements and to take loans against securities acquired from dirty money, and paying taxes on profit. D. None of these. The correct answer is, option C. Question number 10. Dash are engaged in selling goods, and providing services, with large volume of business, and often engaged in cash dealings. Fill in the blank. The options are A. Shell companies B. Front companies C. Offshore banking D. Poala systems The correct answer is, option B. Question number 11, Dash is the process of keeping the amount, lower than that fixed for reporting, and building similar transactions, till the amount planned to be laundered, is reached fully. Fill in the blank. The options are A. Entrailing B. Lading C. Slushing D. Smurfing The correct answer is, option D. Question number 12, Dash services are used to buy, or sell foreign currencies, to consolidate small denomination bank notes into larger ones, or to exchange financial instruments. Criminals are attracted to this method of laundering, as they are not as heavily regulated as, traditional financial institutions. Fill in the blank. The options are A. Remittance B. Bureaus to change C. Back-to-back -back loans D. Collection accounts The correct answer is, option B. Question number 13, the PML Act, 2002 has the provision, for which of the following activities? 1. Mandating banks, to assist tax enforcement authorities. 2. Extradition of the accused. 3. Acquisition of the tainted money kept outside the country. The options are, A. Both 1 and 2 above. B. Both 2 and 3 above. C. Both 1 and 3 above. D. 1, 2 and 3 above. The correct answer is, option D. Question number 14, 
the PMLA, has directed all financial institutions including banks, NBFCs, and intermediaries to maintain a record of the transaction, of a prescribed nature, and value, for a minimum period of dash, and to furnish information to the dash. Fill in the blank. The options are A. 15 years, Financial Intermediary Unit B. 10 years, Financial Intelligence Unit C. 12 years, Financial Laundering Unit D. 15 years, Financial Monitoring Unit The correct answer is, Option B. Question number 15, as per Section 12, and 15 of PMLA, and Section 51A of UAPA, the Government of India, in consultation with RBI has notified some rules, prescribing the procedure, and manner of maintaining, and reporting information by banks, and financial institutions. Which of the following guidelines are not true? The options are A. The information referred to in Rule 3, of the Maintenance Records Rules 2005, should be furnished quarterly. B. Banks should maintain records, of all cash transactions of the value, more than 10 rupees locks. C. Banks should maintain records of all the series of cash transactions, integrally connected to each other, that have been valued below 10 rupees locks, where such series of transactions have taken place within a month. D. All of these. The correct answer is, Option A. Question number 16, dash is the provision of banking services, by one bank to another bank. Fill in the blank. The options are, A, Respondent Banking, B, Crude Banking, C, Correspondent Banking, D, None of these. The correct answer is, Option C. Question number 17. Dash is a bank which is incorporated in a country, where is no physical presence, and is not affiliated to any regulated financial group. Fill in the blank. The options are A. Correspondent Bank B. Shell Bank C. Respondent Bank D. Compendium Bank The correct answer is, option B. Question number 18. In the process of customer identification, the customer identification data should be updated dash in 5 years, in case of low risk category, and dash in case of medium, and high risk category customers. Fill in the blank. The options are. A. Twice, 1 year. B. Once, 1 years. C. Twice, 2 years. D. Once, 2 years. The correct answer is, option D. Question number 19, while monitoring of customer transaction, it should be ensured that there is no dash, that is, manipulation of the size of transaction, so that if seen individually, they fall below the threshold that needs to be reported, to the monitoring authority. Fill in the blank. The options are, A. Entrailing. B. Structuring. C. Lading. D. Slushing. The correct answer is, option B. Question number 20, dash is a matrix of different components, such as source of funds, level of income, volume, and frequency of transaction etc., that helps arrive at a benchmark transaction, for individual customer transactions, against which a comparison can be made. Fill in the blank. The options are A. KYC Profile B. Customer Risk Profile C. Transaction Profile D. Interim Profile The correct answer is, Option C. Question number 21, which of the following should be considered under the scrutiny, of unusual transaction? 1. Sudden spurt in turnover. 2. Accounts suddenly closed. 3. Accounts with high turnover, and high balance. 4. Transaction in high-risk accounts. 
The options are A. Both 1 and 2 above B. Both 2 and 3 above C. 1, 2 and 4 above D. All of these The correct answer is, option C. Question number 22, which of the following are required documents, to establish both the identity, and the correct address, while opening accounts of companies? 1. Certificate of Incorporation, and Memorandum of Articles of Association. 2. Resolution of Board of Directors to open an account, and identification of those who have the authority, to operate the account. 3. Power of attorney granted to a partner, or an employee of the firm to transact business, on its behalf. 4. Copy of pan allotment letter. 5. Copy of telephone bill. The options are A. 1, 2, 3 and 4 above. B. 1, 2, 4 and 5 above. C. 2, 3, 4 and 5 above. D. 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 above. The correct answer is, option D. Question number 23, which of the following should be treated as a customer for prudent KYC analysis? The options are, A, any person, or company which can conduct a transaction, in relation to an account offered by a ban. B, any person who is a signatory to an account, offered by a building society. C, any person, or company which holds an account, issued by a credit union. D, all of these. The correct answer is, option D. Question number 24, Mr. X is a politician, raising funds for an upcoming election. He regularly banks at ABC Bank, and opens an account, in which to place campaign contributions. The contributions are expected to reach, about 2 million rupees. Mr. X's private bankers at ABC Bank, are aware of his profession, and the purposes of the account. Since he is an old customer, and has a good reputation, they waive many of the checks to verify the funds. What money laundering risks, if any, does ABC Bank face in this situation? The options are A. Reputational, Operational, Legal, and Concentration Risk B. Reputational, and Operational Risk C. Reputational, Operational and Legal Risk D. None of these The correct answer is, Option C. Question number 25, What should you consider, when managing AML, or CTF in your business? The options are, A. Knowing your customer. B. Destination of funds. C. Methods of delivery such as cash, telephone, and internet banking. D. All of these. The correct answer is, Option D. Question number 26, please read the KYC practice, given below. Identify the KYC element, which best relates to the stated practice. Well developed, and applied customer assessments enable identification, and classification of potentially high-risk customers. This is known as DASH. Fill in the blank. The options are A. Customer acceptance B. Customer identification C. Accounts and transaction monitoring D. Risk management The correct answer is, option A. Question number 27, please read the KYC practice, given below. Identify the KYC element, which best relates to the stated practice. High-risk customer activity, is regularly reviewed, and substantial high-risk customers, are personally known to management. This is known as DASH. Fill in the blank. The options are A. Customer acceptance B. Customer identification C. Accounts and transaction monitoring D. Risk management The correct answer is, option C. Question number 28. Please read the KYC practice given below. 
identify the KYC element, which best relates to the stated practice. Effective information gathering strategies, enable building of a solid information base, about each customer. This is known as Dash. Fill in the blank. The options are A. Customer Acceptance B. Customer Identification C. Accounts and Transaction Monitoring D. Risk Management The correct answer is Option B. Question number 29. During customer acceptance and identification activities, on which of the following customers should enhanced due diligence be conducted? The options are A. Trustees, nominees, and fiduciaries B. Non-face-to-face -face customers C. Correspondent accounts D. All of these The correct answer is, option D. Question number 30. A lawyer who banks with you, is a sole practitioner. He wants to open a trust account, for a client. He provides you with the trust documents, and the name, and address of the trust beneficiary, but is unable to provide additional details, due to a client confidentiality obligation. You notice that the address, is from an overseas jurisdiction. What level of due diligence would be required? The options are A. This situation does not require enhanced due diligence. You know the lawyer well, and you have been provided with the trust documents and identity of the beneficiary. B. This situation requires enhanced due diligence because an offshore jurisdiction is involved. C. This situation requires enhanced due diligence because the lawyer is clearly hiding something when he says he is under a client confidentiality obligation. D. None of these. The correct answer is, option B. Question number 31. AML, or KYC guidelines are issued under Dash. Fill in the blank. The options are, A, BR Act, 1949, B, PMLA, 2002, C, RBI Act, D, both PMLA, 2002, and BR Act, 1949. The correct answer is, option D. Question number 32, a well-established, and well-regarded customer of your bank, refers a new customer to you. The new customer is a leasing company, that does business in the Philippines. It is also listed on the Philippine Stock Exchange. What level of due diligence would be required? The options are, A, this situation requires, a normal degree of due diligence. It is a public company, and has been introduced by a trusted customer. B. This situation requires, a very limited degree of due diligence, because the new customer is a public company, and has been introduced by a trusted customer. C. This situation requires, an enhanced degree of due diligence. The customer is a non-bank financial company, based overseas. D. None of these. The correct answer is, Option C. Question number 33, Customer verification, is vital to any KYC procedure. What is acceptable in verifying, an individual customer? Select the incorrect response from the alternatives below. In verifying an individual customer, you can rely on Dash. Fill in the blank. The options are A. A certified copy of a birth certificate in conjunction with the customer's driver's license and Medicare card. B. Citing original identification such as birth certificate and driver's license. C. A reference from a good friend. D. None of these. The correct answer is, option C. Question number 34, the three stages of money laundering are dash. Fill in the blank. The options are A. Layering, Placement, Refining B. Placement, Refining, Integration C. Refining, Integration, Layering D. Integration, Layering, Placement 
The correct answer is, option D. Question number 35, in determining what risks a customer poses, which consideration should not be a major factor? The options are, A, where the customer resides, or where the business is headquartered. B, what is the size of your financial institution? C, what occupation, or type of business does the customer, derive their income from? D, what are the customer's ethnic heritage, sexual orientation, and political beliefs? The correct answer is, option D. Question number 36, money laundering refers to dash, fill in the blank. The options are, A, conversion of cash into gold, B, conversation of assets into cash, C, conversion of assets into cash, D, conversion of money which is illegally obtained. The correct answer is, option D. Question number 37, which one of the following is a valid document, available to the bank for customer identification? The options are, A, election ID card, B, ration card, C, bank statement of account, D, photograph. The correct answer is, option A. Question number 38, which of the following is an objective of, KYC? The options are, A, if loan given, it would not be a NPA, B, to ensure appropriate customer identification, C, ensure appropriate customer identification, monitor transactions of suspicious nature, D, to monitor transactions of suspicious nature. The correct answer is, Option D. Question number 39. As a manager, or compliance officer, it is a part of your job to dash, fill in the blank. The options are, A. Maintain your company's AML program. B. Ensure that proper reports are filed, and records are maintained. C. Ensure that all employees report suspicious activities. D. All of these. The correct answer is, option D. Question number 40, which of the following is an example of smurfing? The options are, A, wiring money to a foreign country, B, a broker buying dollars with rupees, C, a drug dealer asking a stranger, to buy money order with drug money, D, all of these. The correct answer is, Option C. Question number 41, why laundering might attempt, a series of small currency transaction, over time. The options are, A, a provision of the Bank Secrecy Act, requires the filing of CTR, for a transaction exceeding 10 rupees locks. B, larger amount are too risky to carry around. C, that's the way in which launderers take in the funds. D, none of these. The correct answer is, option A. Question number 42, what does CTR stands for? The options are, A, Custom Trafficking Report, B, Current Transaction Receipt, C, Currency Transaction Report, D, Criminal Trading Raid. The correct answer is, option C. Question number 43, which of these activities, might require a suspicious activity report? The options are, A, a customer cancels a transaction, and requests to do a second transaction, for less amount in order to avoid providing ID. B, a customer requests, an unusually high value transaction, and cannot explain the reason for the transaction, or the source of cash. C, both a customer cancels a transaction, and requests to do a second transaction, for less amount in order to avoid providing ID, and a customer requests an unusually high value transaction, and cannot explain the reason for the transaction, or the source of cash. D, 
none of these. The correct answer is, option C. Question number 44, which of the following is a high-risk activity? The options are, A, a customer purchasing a car from a local garage, B, printing a statement for a customer, C, a loan for home improvement, D, money transfer to unknown third parties. The correct answer is, option D. Question number 45, which of the following terms, is used to describe the process of sending money, through multiple financial institutions, to make it difficult to track? The options are A. Integration B. Camouflage C. Placement D. Layering The correct answer is, option D. Question number 46, the personal ramification of AML, non-compliance include dash. 1. Temporary ban from the financial service industry. 2. Forfeiture of property. 3. Termination of employment. 4. Substantial legal fees. Fill in the blank. The options are. A. Both 1 and 2 above. B. Both 2 and 3 above. C. 2. 3 and 4 above. D. All of these. The correct answer is, option C. Question number 47, which of the following are examples of willful blindness? The options are, A. Allowing a customer to purchase money orders, under different names. B. Cashing a check, for someone who is not the payee of the check. C. Completing a transaction for a less, non-reportable amount after a customer has refused, to produce ID for a larger transaction. D. All of these. The correct answer is, option D. Question number 48, PAN, permanent account number, is compulsory for fixed deposits, remittances like DDs, or TTS, or RTCs etc. Fill in the blank. The options are A. If the amount exceeds 10,000 rupees B. If the amount exceeds 25,000 rupees C. If the amount exceeds 50,000 rupees D. No such limit is fixed, by the income tax authorities The correct answer is, option C Question number 49, which of the following documents? can be accepted by banks, as a proof of customer identification. The options are A. Electricity bill B. Salary slip C. Income, or wealth tax assessment order D. Election I card The correct answer is, option D. Question number 50, what does dormant? or an operative account mean? The options are A. No debit slash credits in account for a certain period B. Dead account without any operation for long C. No debit entries slash but certain credit entries for certain period D. Fixed asset account of the bank The correct answer is, option C. For AMLKYC certification and more practice tests, visit www.vskills.in. For more such videos, subscribe to our channel.